Let's look at using your TI-83 or 84 calculator to find areas, percentages, probabilities, and z-scores in a standard normal distribution. First, let's look at this curve. This is our standard normal distribution curve, um, which, of course, represents our distribution with 0 being the mean and um, 1, 2, and 3 representing z-scores, which correspond to uh, 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations above the mean, and negative 1, negative 2, negative, and negative 3 representing scores that correspond to 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations below the mean. Well, the first thing I want to look at here is finding the probability of uh, z being greater than a value, or and the value in this case happens to be 1.52, or finding the area to the right of z equals 1.52. Remember, this is the same thing. Um, we're going to use the same method to find both things. So here's our uh, z is 1.52 um, written in blue. And um, where is that? Of course, that's over to the right of the curve. So what we did here when we did it with the table method, let's just review. And now I'm not going to bring up the table. You already know how to do the table method. I'm just going to review what we would get if we use the table our table value for z equals 1.52 is 0 0.9357 and because this is way to the right uh, we want all that area way to the right so we have to subtract it from the rest of the curve which is 1 so our solution was to subtract that 0 0.9357 from 1 and we got 0 0.0643 now with the calculator we have to tell the calculator uh, a little bit more information so let's think everything to the right is all of this out here and because this curve is asymptotic it goes on forever so it's going to go on forever to positive infinity so that information is going to become very useful in a couple of seconds here so what we need to do in our calculator let's bring up our calculator here is we need to um, find where this um, this uh, process is or where this function is. So we're going to push second and there's a key called VARS and above it says DISTR for distributions. And you see you have a drop down list that comes down. What you want to select is selection 2 which is normal CDF and in that you want to put your left and right bounds so your, uh, or your lower and upper bounds. Your lower bound here because 1.52 is on the left of what you're looking at you want to put 1.52 and then you're going to push the comma key which is right above the number 7 and then you're going to select positive infinity and I know you can't do this directly on this calculator so what you have to do is you have to push second and then the comma key which gives you that E which we normally use for powers of 10 and then you're going to push 99 and the calculator interprets that as positive infinity and when you push enter you see we get a value of 0.2 zero six four two five five and that of course can very easily be rounded up to zero point zero six four three now I want to say at at this point that sometimes a calculator will give you a different answer than what you might find on a table so you should always 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 write down where you got your values from this way if you're on a test or an exam the grader or your professor or your teacher will know where you got your value so they wouldn't, mar wouldn't mark it wrong because this is an absolutely uh, valid place to get your information. Now let's look at another example. Let's look at finding the area to the left. And I want to find the area to the left of, 1 .3, of z equals 1.35, which is the same as finding the probability that z is less than 1.35. So the way we did this before is we went into our table and we would just accept the value. So the, the table value for z equals 1.35 is 0 0.9115 and we just take that answer. We don't have to do anything with it when we uh, use the table. Calculator is slightly different. What we need to do is we need to understand where is the left side because our method requires us to put in two values. So we need to say everything to the left of z equals 1.35 well that goes on out to negative infinity so negative infinity is going to be our lower bound or our uh, left side value so let's go back to our calculator 
and let's make that selection again second vars a normal CDF and what we're going to put in here is we're going to push the negative which is right below the number three and we're then we're going to put second and get that E 99 the calculator says that that's negative infinity use your comma and on the right side was 1.35 close that push enter and we get a value of 0.91149 which very easily round up to 0.9115 uh, the next thing we want to do is something that's a little more difficult for us requires a little more math it's not that difficult but just requires us to do a little more math is finding the probability or the area between two z-scores so here's my example find the area between uh, z equals negative 1.57 and z equals uh, 1.23 and again that's the same as finding the probability that z will be between those two scores so let's kind of see where they exist uh, z equals 1.23 is about right here and z equals negative 1.57 is about right here so we want to find all this in between and that looks like a pretty good chunk of the curve so the way we did that before as we went to our table and we first found the uh, table value for 1.23 which was 0 0.8907 uh, then we went to the table value for z equals negative 1.57 which is 0 0.8 zero five eight two and our solution was to uh, subtract the smaller from the larger and we got zero point eight three two five and that looks like about eighty three percent of the curve so on our calculator it's pretty much the same thing as we did before but now we have two actual values we can enter so let's go back to our calculator and we go second and get that distribution there normal CDF and we're just going to put our values in here. So our left side was uh, negative 1.57, comma, and our right side was uh, 1.23. Close that out. And here we get 0 0.832443. And now here's the thing. We can see that that will never round up to 0 0.8325. So in this case, it's very, very critical, like I said a couple of minutes ago, that you absolutely write down where you got your solution. Uh, the final thing I want to show you, and the thing that's most frustrating for statistics students, is finding a z-score that corresponds to a particular percentage. So here's my example. Find the z-score corresponding to 87%. Well, let's see where is that on the curve. We know that the mean is at 50. Um, 1 is about 84%. So 87% is going to be right in here. So what we need to do here is what we would do on the table is we go into the body of the table and we have to kind of search around and we find that the closest to 0.87 is 0.8708 which corresponded to a z of 1.13 so when we use our calculator uh, this is a little bit different but this is a big time saver here we're going to push second vars again and then we're going to select section uh, select selection three which is inverse normal and at that point all we have to do is put in our value which is 0.87 close that and we see we get a z-score of 1.126 which absolutely will round up to 1.13 I hope you use this this is a great time saver uh, just remember to always write down where you got your answers so that the person who's grading your test will uh, will not mark it wrong based upon uh, where you got your results